While the pandemic is at its peak, a woman self-isolates in a cabin, only to find that a serial killer is stalking her. Tom watches a reality TV show called Trap Stars alone in his apartment. When he gets bored, he looks at photos of his ex-girlfriend, but he gets pissed over this and throws out a wig she used to own. Soon, someone rings the doorbell, and he greets Lauren, whom he met on a dating app. The two talk over some alcohol, and it doesn't take long before things escalate. Before Tom can get what he wants, Lauren excuses herself to go to the bathroom. As Tom waits, someone calls his phone, but no one answers on the other end of the line. Just then, he starts hearing his own voice echo from across the room. Following the sound, he finds the phone that called him on the floor, which has his number registered with a derogatory name. He then grabs a knife, thinking that there's an intruder. Suddenly, a masked man chokes him with a crowbar and tackles him to the ground. While Tom is being suffocated, Lauren is busy taking pictures in the bathroom. When she gets out, she catches the masked man leave before she finds Tom's lifeless body on the floor. Elsewhere, Vicky stands on the side of the road waiting for her friend to pick her up. Stacy, her friend, arrives shortly after, but she needs Vicky to drive as she's too hungover. On the road, Stacy apologizes that she needs to put Vicky in quarantine. Her roommates are too paranoid about the pandemic, and it doesn't help that Vicky is from New York. Stacy adds that she also feels responsible since she told Vicky about webcamming, which is why her boyfriend broke up with her and kicked her out. Vicky reassures her that she gave her an easy way to earn money and her boyfriend was trash anyway. She then decides to use her time in quarantine to do webcamming so she can soon afford a place of her own. Later, they arrive at Stacy's cabin, where Vicky will stay for a week. Stacy gives her a list of contacts, mentioning a young couple who were her only neighbors in the area. She then leaves shortly after. That night, Vicky watches Trap Stars, where Paris Hilton is the host. Suddenly, the power goes out. Then she starts hearing footsteps coming from outside. When she goes to check, she doesn't find anyone, though she discovers that someone purposely turned the circuit breaker off. The following day, while Vicky talks to Stacy on the phone, she gets a request from her biggest client, whom she hates because he takes his role-playing too seriously. However, she can't turn him down, so she gets into a call with him. During the call, Vicky plays her part, calling him her husband. The client wants her to make a special video just for him, which Vicky agrees to do later. After this, she decides to relax by the porch, falling asleep until nighttime. She awakes to the TV powering on by itself, so she goes inside to check it. As she mutes the TV, a masked man passes behind her unnoticed. She hears the floorboard creaking, so she follows it to the front porch. Unbeknownst to her, the man is standing on the roof, just before the edge of the porch. Luckily, Vicky decides to go back inside, saving her from encountering him. The following day, Vicky wakes up to find that there's no Wi-Fi or electricity in the house. She leaves a voice message for Stacy, telling her that she's in the mood but has no material to work with. Just then, someone rings the doorbell, and it's the handyman she called, who turns out to be a little too attractive. The handyman tells her that her cables were cut, but it's probably caused by a curious animal. He puts a temporary fix to restore her Wi-Fi, then says he'll return to fix it for good. Before he leaves, the handyman notices the tension between him and Vicky, but she keeps her composure and remains professional. That afternoon, she takes a relaxing bath while watching Trap Stars. Suddenly, one of her biggest fans, Jazzy, requests a call. She greets him and asks him for updates on his life, to which he gladly shares. Jazzy also asks her for updates, and she goes on to tell him that she has moved back to her hometown. Because there's no electricity, Vicky adorns the house with Christmas lights and jack-o'-lanterns later that night. After this, she returns to the tub to create the video for her annoying client. Just then, the pizza delivery man arrives, so Vicky goes to pay him. He then asks if he can use her bathroom, which Vicky reluctantly permits. As he does his business, he fails to notice a man's shadow passing by the window. When the delivery man gets out of the bathroom, he casually sits on the sofa, asking if he could take a puff at Vicky's cigarette. She agrees, then goes on to share the horrific story of the cabin. He says that a man tormented the family who stayed there for two weeks and made the parents watch as he killed the kids. Before the delivery man leaves, Vicky confirms if he's sure it's the same cabin. He then admits that he might be wrong. As the delivery man drives back to his workplace, he finds his path blocked by a dead deer. Just then, the masked man springs from the back seat and kills him. The following day, Vicky goes on an afternoon jog when someone starts chasing her. When the woman grabs her shoulder, Vicky jumps, only to discover that she's Sheriff Rogers with her nephew, Deputy Wayne. Roger shares that she's checking on her neighbor since their relatives couldn't get a hold of them. She then offers Vicky a ride home because it's getting dark. During the ride, Wayne talks about the recent killings in the nearby town, where a notorious crowbar killer is said to have murdered women around Vicky's age. He adds that the killer murders everyone close to the victim, then saves the women for last. Rogers then tells Wayne to shut up because he's scaring Vicky. When they arrive at the cabin, Vicky notices that the door is open. Suspicious, Rogers tells them to stay in the car while she goes inside to inspect. After waiting a few minutes, Rogers suddenly screams making Vicky jump into action with Wayne following her. When they get inside, they're greeted by a masked person, who turns out to be Rogers. 
She laughs at the reaction, then reassures Vicky that the house is secure. She adds that the wind probably opened the door, considering that her lock is quite old. Later that night, Vicky gets into a call with Jazzy, where he teaches her how to dance. As the two enjoy their time, Vicky gets a call from her obsessive client, so she bids Jazzy goodbye. Once she gets on the other call, she excuses herself to get dressed. When she returns, the client asks her to make another video without the mask, so he can see her eyes when she tells him that she loves him. Vicky agrees, so they discuss how much the video costs. The power suddenly goes out, so Vicky checks the circuit breaker. When she returns to the cabin, she peeks into the window blinds and sees a man fast approaching. Scared, she immediately gets a knife and calls Sheriff Rogers, reporting that someone is outside her house. However, it'll take her 30 minutes to get there, so she tells Vicky to hide in the meantime. Just then, a man taps Vicky on the shoulder, and this leads her to accidentally slash his face. She screams at the man, asking him who he is. He replies that he's Max Daniels, the neighbor. Vicky quickly apologizes, then Max says that he used to smoke with Stacy, so he came to visit when he realized that someone was staying at the cabin. Just then, Max notices Vicky's costume, so she quickly covers herself up and heads upstairs to get dressed. As Max waits in the living room, he sees Vicky's webcamming page, which has a notification for an incoming call. Just then, Vicky walks in with a first aid kit to tend to Max's wound. Later on, the two smoke together while watching Vicky's favorite reality show. Max can't believe how ridiculous it is, but Vicky is a fan. Just then, she shares that she saw Max's kids when she was heading to the cabin with Stacy. However, Max says that they're staying with his ex for the next two weeks since they broke up six months ago. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door and it's the sheriff. Vicky apologizes for the false alarm, but Rogers wants to look around to check. Not wanting the officers to see what they're smoking, she refuses and explains that she has company. Since there's no other car parked outside, Wayne wonders if she's sleeping with the neighbor, which Vicky shrugs off. Before leaving, Rogers instructs her to tell Max that he should call his family, who's worried sick about him. After this, Max says he needs to go home and feed his dog. He gives Vicky a small hug, then proceeds to leave. The following day, Vicky goes on an afternoon run when she passes by Max's house. There, she hides in the bushes to watch him chop wood. Later that night, Max picks her up in his buggy, inviting her to ride with him. Vicky giddily joins him and they later head to his house. While there, Vicky notices a photo of Max's family with another man. He shares that it's his ex-wife's new boyfriend, and he leaves the photo there for when the kids visit him, so they think that everything is okay. Vicky apologizes for being nosy, then says that she understands since her boyfriend split up with her and kicked her out of his place too. Afterward, the two talk some more, and Vicky tries to kiss Max. However, he politely refuses, saying that he's not ready. Later, Max drives her back to the cabin, and during the ride, he apologizes for the awkward situation. He reassures her that he thinks she's very beautiful, and Vicky replies that she thinks he's handsome. When she gets into the cabin, she suddenly gets greeted by a man swinging a bar at her. Vicky manages to avoid being hit, grabs a knife, and runs into the woods. The man follows her, and she trips, allowing him to catch up. She starts starts screaming and the man calms her down, saying that they simply had a misunderstanding. He then explains that he's Jake, Stacy's cousin, who works as a truck driver. He usually crashes in the cabin when he's working up the coast, and this is one of those instances. When he reckons that Vicky doesn't believe him, he gives up and heads back to the cabin. Later that night, Vicky apologizes to Jake about the incident. He then shows her a childhood picture of him and Stacy, which backs up his claims. Just then, Vicky grabs a bag of stimulants that Stacy left for her. She's never tried them before, so Jake explains what each of them does. After this, they smoke together, which leads to a euphoric experience. Being high, the two copulate in the bathtub. Then they watch a movie before sleeping. The following morning, Vicky finds that Jake is left. When she heads to the front porch to look for him, she sees bloody footprints on the ground leading to the other side of the house. To her surprise, she encounters the handyman who arrived early to fix her circuit breaker. The handyman explains that he had to pull a dead deer that blocked his path earlier, which explains the blood on the porch. After this, he goes on his way. As he drives, he realizes that a police car is tailing behind him, so he pulls over. To his surprise, it's not Sheriff Rogers. That night, Vicky gets on a call with Jazzy, who shares that he just had the most amazing time dancing with his wife. However, hearing this makes Vicky tear up. She explains that she's only tired, but in reality, she's bothered by Jake, who easily left her. Later, she gets into another call with her client, who instantly greets her with cuss words. He claims that she hasn't been loyal, and this infuriates him. However, Vicky doesn't like this treatment, so she drops the call. After this, she decides to go out for a walk to relax. Just then, she passes by Max, who is busy digging a hole while there's a large bag at the back of his truck. This scares her, so she runs, and Max chases after her. She screams when he catches up to her, but Max calms her down. He then explains that he was digging a grave for a dead deer that he found at the side of the road. After this, he asks if Vicky could lend a hand, and she agrees. As Max continues to dig, he asks what Vicky did after he 
dropped her off the other night. She replies that she hung out with Stacy's cousin, to which Max simply comments that it's cool. Meanwhile, Vicky can't help but doubt Max's excuse about the deer, so she attempts to open the bag where the carcass is. However, Max suddenly appears behind her, asking if she could hand him his cigarettes. Vicky gets flustered, then quickly grabs the cigarettes. Just then, Max slips and falls into the grave, which hurts his ankle. He asks Vicky for help, who hesitates but ends up helping anyway. After this, they head to Max's house, where Vicky puts an ice pack on his leg. There, she asks if she could borrow a sweater, so Max tells her to go upstairs where a bunch of his ex's stuff is. She heads there and finds a sweater, but she also discovers a secret room where a laptop has a tab opened on her page. She also finds the wedding invitation of the actual couple that lived in the house, as Max is only pretending to be the husband. Vicky realizes that he's her obsessive client, but she plays it cool when he suddenly peeps in, saying that dinner's ready. While they eat, Max shares that he saw her webcamming page when he was at her place. He goes on to mock her job, saying that they're tricking men into falling in love with them for money. During this, Vicky gets dizzy, making her ask what he put in her drink. She suddenly blacks out, then wakes up cuffed to the bed. Max rants that he went through a lot just to be with her. He also brings out a ring that he got after Vicky said she wanted to marry him. Vicky realizes she can use this against him, so she tricks Max into uncuffing her so he can propose properly. Vicky plays the part, pretending that she's happy to be engaged. However, Max doubts her, so she reassures him by pleasuring him. As Vicky kisses him on the bed, she tells him to close his eyes as she's about to blow his mind. As soon as he does, Vicky smashes the lamp on his face, allowing her to escape. With the dog outside the door, she escapes through the secret room instead, where she finds the belongings of the people that Max killed, including the neighbor's children, the pizza boy, and the handyman. Just then, Max appears, but Vicky makes it outside and steals his buggy. As she drives away, she gets surprised by another vehicle's headlights, so she falls off the buggy. She screams at the person approaching, but it only turns out to be Jake. Vicky warns him that they must leave because the crowbar killer is after her. However, Jake wants to confront the killer himself. Suddenly, the headlights from Jake's truck power on, so he tells Vicky to leave while he fights Max. However, Jake doesn't last long, as Max knocks him out with a crowbar. Meanwhile, Vicky goes to the cabin and tries calling Rogers. When she gets no response, she calls Jazzy and gets him her address, telling him to call the cops. Suddenly, Max enters Vicky's room and Jazzy sees him through the webcam. As Jazzy threatens him, Max smashes the laptop, and it falls into the tub, electrifying it. Vicky hides under the bed while Max continues about his love for her, adding that he killed her ungrateful ex-boyfriend. When he heads for the door, she smashes the bottle on his head, but he remains standing. Enraged, he chokes Vicky, telling her that she's as disappointing as the other women. Fortunately, Jake appears and stabs Max with a knife, but he quickly overpowers him by relentlessly punching him. He then attempts to electrocute Jake in the tub, but Vicky recovers and stabs Max. After this, she pushes him into the water, where he gets electrocuted. Just then, the screen zooms out, revealing that Vicky's story is simply a movie that the Trap Stars contestants are watching. They discuss how they knew Max was the killer, but they're more amazed that they were featured in the film. 